Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Shallu la ilaha illallah 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 Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Contact. 
And usually when I say these things about the nikmah, the blessings of, it, of attending Jumar, this is what's usually in the back of my mind. And now we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Muslims all over the world a taste of that. There are some cities around the world where you can't go to Jumar. There's no match to open. Even in some Muslim countries, like last week I read in a town in Senegal, the government issued an order to have the masjid closed. And this particular masjid, this particular imam, they stayed open. And so they arrested the imam. And then the people came out and protested against this. And so I'm saying this as a reminder, or as a reminder to you and I that just because you have a blessing today, don't take it for granted that that blessing will always be there. This is why I'm always talking about shukr, gratitude. Gratitude is not saying thank you, or shukran, or jazakallah khayr. That's just an expression of gratitude. That's an expression of thankfulness. But the essence of gratitude or thankfulness is to use whatever that gift, whatever that blessing is that Allah gave you, the way Allah intended for you to use it. Whatever that is. Money, good husband, good wife, clothes, juma, the masjid. Whatever it is Allah gave you. Use it the way Allah intended for you to use it. That's gratitude. And I always give an example of just imagine yourself, you yourself, giving someone a gift, some clothing, a shirt, a pair of pants, a hat, a kufi, some shoes, whatever it is. Just imagine you gave that person that thing. It was a gift. And then you see that person never wearing it, or worse yet, abusing it. The first thing you would think is that person didn't appreciate. That person wasn't thankful for what you gave them. That's us amongst human beings. What about the gifts that Allah has given us? We, all, we, we always get caught up in the moment. We're upset that some masters stay open. We're upset that some masters close. Always caught up in the moment. Ask yourself the question. How did you treat the masjid before all of this happened? Did you pray in the masjid all the time that you could? Did you come to classes all the time that you could? Did you come to Juma all the time that you could? Like, we, like I said, I'm always thinking about those people that can't come to Juma. There are people who don't come to Juma and they can come to Juma. But they don't come. Now this is happening, now all of us have an extreme position on whether we should go to the bathroom, whether it should be open or closed. How were you before all of this happened? See, when you have a gift, when I have a gift, and we don't use it, Allah gives us rope and then he takes it away from us. He takes it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La in shakartum la azidanakum. If you are grateful for a thing, Allah will, Allah will give you more of it. If you are grateful for a thing, Allah will increase it. The opposite is true. If you're not grateful for a thing, Allah will take it from you. How many of us brothers had a good woman and we didn't recognize it at the time? And we abused or neglected her. And then Allah took, took her away from you. She got tired of your behind. And then after that, you crying in your pillow. Changing your social media status to it's complicated, from it's complicated to single. Okay, you're single now. You're sad now. Your new wife is your pillow. But how did you treat your ex-wife? No one's perfect, she's not perfect, and neither are you. Perfection belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Anything you have is going to have some defect in it. It's like regardless of where you go, any mansion, any community is going to have a defect in it. Some brothers, some sisters, they say, well, I don't go here anymore because they do this. I found this new community over there. And I always tell them, I may not even know about that community, but I guarantee you it's not perfect. Why? Because this is life. We're human beings. Human beings are not perfect. You're going, you're going to go somewhere and someone's not going to treat you right. So we should be thankful for the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us because that blessing may not always be there. Some of us can't go to work. Life as we know it has changed. Well, how do you like it, Rabbi I mean, that wasn't the clip, but we want to talk about sacrifice. We want to spend a few minutes that we have left talking about sacrifice. What is sacrifice? A lot of times when we say the word sacrifice, maybe some of us may think about the process of preparing an animal for us to eat. The true essence of sacrifice is giving up something that you love. Something that you value for the sake of or to something or someone that you value more. Giving something that you value, giving it up for something that you value more. That's sacrifice. And that is the key to achieve anything. Mark my words, sacrifice. That is the key, the main key of achieving anything in this life. Whether you're trying to do good or evil. Evil? Yeah, evil. Give me an example. A lot of us are fascinated by secret society. And they have different names and different branches, etc., etc., etc. The reason why they're secret, because those people who are at the top, they had to sacrifice something to get inside. They had to sacrifice something to even get at the low levels of these societies. The people that you see in front of you, the famous people or the rich people that's in front of the camera, they sacrifice something. I don't care what form of entertainment rocks your boat. I guarantee you there was someone that the industry knew about that had more talent than them. If they are, if they are rappers, they are better rappers than them that you know of. If they're singers, the people sing better than them. If they're actors, they're people that act better than them. But why are the ones that you see the ones that you see? They sacrifice something. For some of them, they sacrifice their bodies in ways that I don't need to go into details. You know what I'm getting at. Some of them in some very foul ways. Sometimes these things are recorded for leverage. They sacrifice that. And now you see them. Even though you can probably name 10 people that are better than them. They gave something up that was valuable to them. And then they were allowed to move up the ranks. There's a, a famous guy who was in the mafia of the mob. And he got out of it. And he's living to tell the story. I'm not going to mention his name, but you can Google him. He's doing a whole bunch of interviews. He's written books. 
He's trying to advise people to stay away from organized crime, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he mentioned that in order to get into that, in order to become a made man, that one of the part of their rituals is that blood had to be changed. They had to extract blood from you. Among other things, and it's been dramatized in movies, so you know about all of, all of that already. You're not going to get in and not give something up. It don't work that way. Those of you who know me know that I really don't care a lot about professional sports. But you know someone very famous who many consider to be the best of all time died in a helicopter crash. When that happened, it shocked a lot of people. So naturally, I'm watching interviews. I'm like, okay, a lot of people died. What made him so special? And one of the things that stood out about him, his sacrifice. Yeah, he had natural talent like everybody else does, but what made him stand out? When everybody was partying, all of his players that he played with, and in college and in, 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 in the professional sports, was partying, getting drunk, messing with girls. He wasn't there. He sacrificed his sleep. You know, a lot of people look at us Muslims because we get up early before sunrise and make a lot. During that time, he was up, up, up working, working out, training, getting his cardio in. He sacrificed something. You don't get to be at that level of the game without giving something up. You have to give something up. And that's why many of his contemporaries, they couldn't deal with him. Not that they didn't have the talent, but they didn't sacrifice what he sacrificed. So I want you to think about that while I sit. You want to achieve something, you have to give something up. That's the only way you're going to get there. Well, I'm really not here to that. Accept this or you accept that, you never have a, another hard day in your life. 
That's not Islam. It's almost the exact opposite of promise. When you accept this truth, be ready for it to get difficult. Be ready for some hardship. Sacrifice. Right after prayers, Allah mentioned. Last Sharika Allah, who he has no part in, and of this I have been commanded, and I am the first of the Muslims. Sacrifice. I don't care what you do while I'm talking. After the Juma Khutbah, you reflect on the Khutbah. Think of anyone that means something to you, that achieved anything, that was great at what they did. Look at their life. Certain things are going to pop out. All successful people have a lot of things in common. One of those things that they have in common is that they gave something up. They sacrificed something. Even people that was born, like if your thing is wealth and you want to be rich and you think that rich people are successful, even people that was born with a silver spoon in their mouth and was able to uh, uh, maintain their wealth, even they have something. They gave something up. Because just like, just as much, just like you have people that have money, there's, as they say, 10 people ready to take it from you. So keeping your money is an achievement. Not only making it, keeping it. Sacrifice. What is the whole theme of Eid al-Adha? Sacrifice. Not the Eid that's coming up after Ramadan that we all are worried about. Ramadan is not going to be the same, blah, 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 blah. The Eid after that, sacrifice. Ibrahim, Abraham, ready to sacrifice his son Ismail. And amazingly, Ismail willing to be sacrificed. Sacrifice. Ready to give something up. Most of us pray for boys. Oh Allah, please bless me with a righteous son. Ibrahim was ready to sacrifice his son for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give something up. I'm not going to go into his story. But why did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that Salman a Farsi? Why did he say that he's from me? In other words, when you look at the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is a high, extreme, high rank in Islam, when you look at the people who are included among his family, some man of Foxy is included amongst them, even though he has no blood relation to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that he was from his family? Because he had just taken Shahada. And he had told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum jami'an, may Allah be pleased with all of them, he had told them about how he got to Medina, the different countries he went into. I gave quick thoughts about this. SubhanAllah, what this man went through, he left his hometown in Persia, left his family, became Christian, Studied under a corrupt Christian priest. Studied under a few righteous Christian priests. Was sold into slavery. Was beaten. And then that that those chain of events led him to be led him to be in Medina and to meeting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which was the purpose for the whole journey. And he became Muslim. The Ansar and the Muhajirun, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi begin to argue with one another. No, he from amongst us. Even though he didn't make Hijrah from Mecca to Medina, he still made Hijrah. He's from amongst the Muhajirin. Muhajirin. The Ansar said, no, 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 no. He's from amongst the Ansar. He's from amongst us. They want to claim him. He's down with us. He's down with us. I just finished talking about basketball. You trying to de decide who's going to be on what team and someone that's nice steps on the court. He on our side. No, 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 no. He on our side. Salman al Farsi, he was that one. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam settled that argument. No, he's from my friend, he's from me. 
Why did he get that distinction? Because of what he gave up, what he sacrificed. He gave something up. He gave up everything. I don't care what scholar you like or love, guess what? He gave up something. He gave up time. He gave up making money. He gave up sleep. He gave up rest. I'm going to give you a proof that he gave up sleep. I don't care. You say, well, he's, he's just extremely intelligent. No. What happens to most of us when we open a book? We read one line. <sighs> you all know it's true. We get tired. That's why many historians credit Muslims with the discovery of coffee in East Africa or in Yemen from the Bun tree. Because the early Muslims used to use that bean to stay up so they can study. So even the usage of coffee was related to seeking knowledge. Why? Because as soon as you try to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by seeking knowledge, shaitan comes in and wants to make you go to sleep. You know we could be watching a game, we could be watching a movie, we could be watching a TV show, we could binge watch and not yard one time. We sit there and read one sentence. Oh. The scholar sacrificed all of that. He drank the coffee. He did what he had to do to stay up when all of us would have went to sleep. He gave up the sleep. Sacrifice. Most of us like to eat. One of the ways of drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fasting. Many of the people that we revere, they fast a whole lot. And they don't brag about it. You won't even know it. They're depriving themselves of food. Sacrifice. I know of brothers who went for a long time abstinent. No girlfriend, no boyfriend, not just marrying anyone. Yeah, because it's real easy to get married nowadays. You get married, they get divorced tomorrow. But I know people that have them, I have their names and their faces in my mind. They didn't get married, they abstained until they found someone that was compatible with them. And they still married. Good, wholesome families. Some of us are not ready to take that sacrifice. We're not ready to give that up. I got to get mine off. I got to get my marry anything. She don't even, she's not even personal anymore. She's a thing. Anything. Look, come on, I got to get that. You know how we are. And then when we quench that thirst, I don't know if I can do it. I, I don't know. I'm trying to hold on, man. I'm probably going to go out you didn't give nothing up. I'm like, man, why is that brother, his family, they, they such a good couple, they compatible, they got children, they right. Well, what's going on? Well, what's up with them? They gave something up. <laughs> when you marry anything, he married the one. Sacrifice, I don't care what category you look at, sacrifice is the key. And we have to be ready to give, give that up. We have to be ready to sacrifice. If we're not ready to give something up, we're not ready to sacrifice, we're just talking. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in conclusion, That you will never, Allah uses the word land, which means it's never going to happen. He didn't say, he said, Lent to now. Lent to You will never. It's not going to happen. Lent to now. You will never. That you will never. That you will never. reach will Righteousness. Piety. That until you spend. Until you give up. Mimah from what to hibun, from what you love. A lot of times we give, we give sacrifice, when we spend money in the way of Allah, we, if we give in cash, we give the money that's hanging out with the lift in our pockets, the 
change, the little dollar we forgot was there. We don't love that. We didn't even recognize it was there, much less love it. Or we, I, yeah, I, coffee costs $5, and you get $5 Seneca. We don't love that. There's reward for that, yeah. But you're not going to achieve piety till you give up or you spend from that which you love. Something that you value. Something that you need, as Allah describes in other verses of the Quran, describing the Sahaba. They give to their brothers even though they have more need for it than they did. That's why they achieve righteousness. They sacrificed. They gave up. And that is the key, that is what the point we want to drive home today. If you want to reach your goals, you're going to have to go where nobody else is willing to go. You want to have to give where no one else is willing to give. That's sacrifice. And may Allah make us from amongst those who sacrifice. I don't